What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm Phil. That's Sam. Hey, guys. What's up? Today we're doing how an AR-15 works, where we've got into some some you know military content and some powerful weapons content, and then we expanded a little bit on that by doing Kentucky ballistics, mm -hmm. which those are cool. We experienced Scott um, with Eddie Hall on the first one. We had the most powerful guy on the planet trying to combat his recoil <laughs> that he was he was in a, in a fight with. Yeah, that was very interesting to watch to see the difference between just like pure strength versus technique and like how that impacted the recoil and your response to the kickback. And then we obviously had the, uh, I don't know if this one's going to be up on the channel yet. I think it probably will be, but uh, we had Scott's unfortunate accident with his 50 cal, which was mind blowing. I was squirming a little bit in that one. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, like I said, we're expanding a little bit into that kind of content. So if you have other recommendations similar to this one here, hopefully this is a good video. I'm not sure. Just went out on a whim, learn about how the AR-15 works. Sounds interesting to me, but if you have any other recommendations, you can drop them down low in the comment section. We always look in the comments to find advice from you guys because you are so knowledgeable and allow us to go further ahead on this journey, whether it's music, comedy, sports, military stuff, cultural stuff, historic stuff. It's been a fantastic ride thus far. Yeah, it's been, I feel like it's gone so much further than we ever even dreamed, like what we've been introduced to. It was like we started this, like listening to just like one or two genres of music, and now we've got this giant catalog and library of content that we've been able to check out. YouTube is a great resource mm -hmm. for learning and hopefully we've yes. helped you guys expand your content as well because we had so much diversity. And if you're new here, then that means you should hit that subscribe button. All right, let's cut to chit chat. Let's get into how an AR-15 works. Pressing the magazine release frees the magazine from the lower receiver. Rounds are loaded and held under high force of the magazine spring. It's then inserted into the magwell and secured by the magazine catch. Pulling and releasing the charging handle chambers the first round. Okay. The charging handle forces the bolt carrier group to the rear. As it comes back, the action spring is compressed. Mm. As the carrier returns forward, the bolt strips the top cartridge from the magazine and wow. guides it into the chamber. Housed within the bolt carrier is the bolt. The bolt contains several locking lugs that engage with the barrel extension lugs. As it makes contact with the barrel breech face, the bolt turns and locks into place. Hmm. The locking function is due to the cam pin housed within the bolt. The pin rides along a track in the bolt carrier, allowing it to rotate. When the bolt is open, it's locked in the forward position and can only rotate once the cam pin has cleared the recess in the upper receiver. In the rare occurrence where the bolt fails to fully close, the forward assist may be used. Pressing the forward assist plunger allows the pawl to engage with the notches cut into the bolt carrier. This will force the carrier forward until the bolt is fully locked. With the selector taken off the safe position, the AR-15 is ready to fire. A recess cut into the selector permits trigger movement. As the trigger is pulled, the hammer is released from the sear. The hammer spring drives the hammer forward to strike the firing pin, causing it to travel forward and impact the cartridge primer. Within the primer is the ignition compound and an anvil. This is insane. <laughs> this is crazy how intricate this yeah. is. I never knew all of these things were inside a gun. Like, the that's engineering nuts. process that goes into making a high quality gun. You think about this, right? This is, you know, obviously a gun that's been adapted. You know, we look, we go back and when Smith and Wesson was creating guns a long, long time ago, mm -hmm. this is a huge step in the evolution of it. But you look how like detailed 
this engineering process has been to make sure this thing is, you know, tip top and, you know, the best on the line that can produce obviously devastating results. But um, really, really cool to just see all the inner workings thus far. If we're just getting to the, you know, the point where the bullet can fire. Yeah. Right. All these things need to take place before we get to that point. Well, I know. And I'm also thinking in my head, like, how much of this is like, like a domino effect of like one step automatically leads to the next and how much of it is like manual, like you need to do things on the gun in terms of like, you know, like caulking a little thing or like pressing a button, the turning off the safety, right? Yeah. I don't know the proper terminology, but you know what I mean? How much of this is like manual versus you just start it and then like some of these effects take place? Well, I think like they were alluding to in the beginning, right? It's like you, you know, if you put in the clip, then that's where some of this star stuff starts to happen. Yeah. There are things happening inside the gun that we're seeing here mm -hmm. that you don't get you to witness. You would never know, you'd never know about. That need to take place before you can, you know, get to the point where we are now. But um, really, really informative Crazy. for me. I'm like blown no, away. It's like, by... whoa, so many steps. Yeah. Within the primer is the ignition compound and an anvil. As the firing pin strikes the primer, a spark is created, wow. igniting the propellant inside the cartridge. The expanding gases propel the bullet down the barrel, okay. where rifling grooves impart stabilizing spin on the bullet. That's wild. The gases escape through a small port in the barrel, through the gas tube, and into the bolt carrier key, for forcing it to the rear. Mm. That's so crazy. The extractor grips the rim of the spent cartridge case and holds it against the bolt face until the ejector forces it through the ejection port, striking the deflector as it exits. Wow. As the bolt carrier comes back, it returns the hammer to its cocked position and stays held back by the disconnector. When the buffer reaches the back of the receiver extension, the action spring returns the bolt carrier forward. As it returns, the bolt strips a new cartridge from the magazine and directs it into the chamber. Wow. Comes full Insane. circle. Simultaneously, the extractor clips into the rim of the new cartridge. Rotation. Releasing the trigger releases the hammer from the disconnector. And again, the trigger sear assumes control of the hammer, readying the rifle for another shot. Wow. Military variants of the AR-15, such as the M16 and M4, add a third option for fully automatic fire. The inclusion of an auto sear and a hook on the back of the hammer allow continuous operation while the trigger is depressed. Moving the selector to auto, the disconnector is disabled from moving and will be unable to hold the hammer when fired. The auto sear is now able to rotate into a recess in the selector. After a shot is taken, the auto sear rotates forward as the bolt carrier comes back, taking control of the hammer. As the bolt carrier returns forward, the back of the carrier trips the auto sear, releasing the hammer just after the bolt closes. Releasing the trigger oh allows the sear to again assume control of the hammer. In order to conserve ammunition and promote greater accuracy, a burst mode was later introduced. Burst With mode. the auto sear still present, the disconnector is split in two. The left disconnector takes control of the hammer in semi fire mode. Switching to burst fire disables the left disconnector. The burst cam and clutch spring allow the M4 to fire up to three rounds at a time. The clutch spring expands to rotate the cam only when the hammer moves in reverse. What? As the trigger rotates forward, the burst disconnector engages the deep notch of the cam. The cam rotates as the hammer is brought back and the disconnector engages the first small notch. This isn't enough for the disconnector to hold the hammer and the auto sear is tripped to fire another round. I cannot believe how complicated this is. This is so insane how in-depth this process is that you have obviously the initial, uh, then you have auto, then you have burst fire, and then the engineering of all of this, like the parts and then obviously 
I mean, it kind of is resembling a car to a degree, but you know, the way a, a car has got so many moving parts at the same time, mm -hmm. right. For it to function. But just the, for me, what's mind blowing is that, you know, somebody sat here <laughs> and figured out how to put all this together and have this be such a, an epic killing machine, <laughs> you yeah. know, you can't really put it any other way. Um, and you know, it's, Obviously, there's tons of research and capital that goes into this process. But you think about this on a scale of we're talking about the AR-15 here, right? But when you talk about the complexity of other weapons beyond this, how much must go into them? If this is just a, you know, a single assault rifle, um, it's pretty wild to me that uh, the research and development that obviously we see the capital expenditures that go into it. I should but, have to say that's why the military budget is a bazillion dollars. But the brain power <laughs> that needs to go into this as well from the engineering process, because all these interlocking parts have to work together seamlessly. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, like it was saying in the video, like the objective is to have a, you know, a streamlined experience for the shooter, right? So that they can get the maximum accuracy and speed and power, all of that at the same time. Um, really, really wild to me, like I said, just how complicated and complex the process of the AR-15 is. Yeah, I think the burst mode thing is really cool because obviously like with automatic, like that's like full-blown automatic, you could probably waste bullets or like it could be too much. You don't need that, but also manually shooting being in manual mode is also probably not quick enough for some certain situations. So I feel like the burst is like a good hybrid in the middle there. There you go. I didn't Sam, even know that existed. Sam likes the burst mode, guys. <laughs> When I get her her AR-15, I'll make sure it's set to burst mode for her. <laughs> ...to hold the hammer and the auto sear is tripped to fire another round. The cam rotates again and the cycle is repeated. The cam rotates once more and the hook engages the third deeper notch. The disconnector is now able to reach the hammer, holding it back. The trigger must be released and pulled again to fire another three rounds. Notched. Once the final round of ammunition has been fired, the magazine follower pushes up on the bolt catch, holding it open as it returns forward. Now Inserting a new magazine and pressing the bolt catch will chamber a new round. Using a cartridge, the front sight post can be adjusted up or down for zeroing. Using the rear cartridge, sight includes smart. two apertures. For short ranges, the 0 to 200 meter is used. For longer ranges, the smaller aperture is used. Crazy. Turning the elevation knob will raise and lower the sight depending on the distance. The knob on the right of the sight is used to adjust for windage. The calibration lines on the back of the sight help control windage adjustments during firing. Wow. The carry handle on the AR-15 can be removed to allow for alternative optics, such as holographic sights. Wow. Or longer range scopes, like the ACOG. Interesting. Large use case. Many ARs are equipped with an adjustable stock the stock rides along the receiver extension, commonly referred to as the buffer tube. Pressing the release lever, moving it to the desired position and releasing it will lock it in place. The ejection port cover can be closed when the rifle is not in use to protect the inner parts from outside elements. The cover opens automatically when the rifle is fired. Crazy. That was how an AR-15 works. Pretty informative video, I would say. They went in full detail. Oh, yeah. I like the animation of it as well. Yeah, the animation was really cool. It's also funny because like, I always wondered, you know, when you watch movies and stuff and they're like, you know, shooting these guns and the bullets are like flying out. I'm always like, I wonder if like it, that's actually how it works. And now I understand because it hits that end post and then comes flying out the side. Right. And like spins. But I always just kind of thought that that was like for dramatic effect. <laughs> no, that's the real world uh, experience. And it got me thinking about how 
the complexity of all these little details within what the gun can do, like they showed at the end, sheltering it from the elements or whatever, um, changing a position of a scope, changing the scope itself, changing the sights, changing the the wind uh, tolerance that uh, is going to factor into the, when you're shooting, obviously, at distance or whatever. And got me thinking about how somebody that's really trained on this and somebody that's in the military, like the U.S. military or something like that, they're going to know all these little details about the AR-15, really when to utilize these different pieces. And obviously, the AR-15 itself is a tool, but there's tools within that tool that can make it more effective. Yeah. And so then when you have these, um, you know, terrorist groups or, you know, these inexperienced individuals out there that get access to some of this weaponry because, you know, they maybe they bought it, bought it on the black market or whatever, it fell into their hands somehow. It really starts to make sense to me now why, like, on the battlefield, they would do so much poorly, so much more poorly than maybe somebody that's trained on how to use the same weapon, yeah. right? They both have the same weapons in the field of battle, but because somebody knows these little details and can well, it's maximize. It's a very complex piece of equipment, like exactly. we just saw. Yeah. Exactly. So because they can maximize the equipment to its full capacity then they have an advantage against their opponent on the battlefield. And you can see why just knowing these little subtle details um, could make a big, big difference in the capability of the tool that you have in your hand. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's, you know, I mean, not that I would ever really have a reason to think about it, but previously I never really thought about like what happens between pulling the trigger and the bullet coming out of the yeah. gun, right? And there's so much that goes on in that really, really quick short span of time. Well, you never know, Sam. Maybe you're going to be caught somewhere sometime and you'll have an ar-15 in your hands and now because of this video you'll be like maybe thinking back you'll be like i remember i watched that video and it said that i have to do and i have to go we, we've been to a gun range before we need to go back to the gun range and i need to like get the big package where you get to shoot all the fancy guns and then i can be like i know how this works <laughs> there you go i enjoyed this video because it was pretty informative and like yeah, i said cool. the animation was was good and so let us know if there's other ones like this that you want us to check out by hitting the comment section down below hit the like button if you found this video was good or informative and we appreciate that support hit the like button hit the subscribe button have a great day we'll see you on our next video thanks for watching guys see you next time